We are back. You are chatting with John P. Today, I am going to be talking about some watches that once were popular or in demand, but today are not very much so. That's right. Watches that used to be hot, but today, maybe they have uh, died down a little bit to varying degrees. I'll explain what I mean about that in just a bit. But once again, Thank you so much for coming back for another episode. Please do not forget to thumbs up, like, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. And of course, we are still open here at DelrayWatch.com where we have tons of awesome watches that we're taking in daily for you to enjoy, check out, see information about, and also purchase or trade in if you so choose or it makes sense for you to do so. A lot of people are kind of scrambling and running about. Do not fear. We have taken safety precautions here. There has not been any lockdowns or anything like that, but we are monitoring the situation for what's going on um, with the spread of illness. And so do not fear. We are perfectly healthy for now and going into the future, we are taking precautions. So let's jump right into the list. First, we have the Cartier Roadster. Now, I actually quite like the Cartier Roadster. I think that it's a pretty attractive design and it does a great job at actually taking Cartier's history and classic dress watch aura and translating that into a more sporty, more casual piece. Now, it's not anything like their dive watches or something similar, though it kind of served as a bridge into where Cartier is today by offering some more really sportier pieces, whereas in the past they were predominantly dress watches. So I think it's interesting to note that this watch, the Cartier Roadster or family of watches, had such a hot run up until about 2010. I want to say that in like 2003, these were so popular. I remember they were on the wrists of all the celebrities, all of the uh, the politicians, the sports, sports celebrities, everyone was wearing the Cartier Roadster and just so many of them were produced and that's probably what I want to blame the demise of the Cartier Roadster on is that if you go to Chrono 24 or anywhere else that sells watches or has a marketplace where there are watches, you can just see endless amounts of Cartier Roadsters and a lot of them at very low prices. As watches became more of a hobby, Many people had these watches and just started trading up and into different things like Rolex Submariners, for example, as those became a lot more um, of the watch to be wearing as a casual wear. And so you just see so many of them that were dumped on the market. Now, it doesn't say anything negatively about the quality because I myself have owned them and I can tell you that, yes, they are pretty good watches, if not great watches. And if you like the watch, they can be had at such a great price, though the demand is just almost non-existent at this point. So once again, if you have this watch or any of the other watches on the list, I'm not saying anything necessarily negative about the watch, but I'm just noting that the demand has gone down for these substantially over the years. So once again, if you want to jump in, now is a good time to jump in on some of these watches, including the Cartier Roadster. Next, we have Frank Mueller to no shape watches. Wow. This watch, I think, has been worn on so many celebrities, whether it was rappers or people that were on TV, you know, the Dr. Phil's or the Steve Harvey's, all of those people, once again, a lot like the brand Hublot, the Frank Mueller watches really have taken quite a beating in recent times. Now, it's interesting to know that while the Frank Mueller models are nice, and the quality is really there in terms of being mid-level to upper mid-level watches, the brand itself has suffered from some serious issues that I believe are the reason or is the reason that the brand has kind of got pushed aside in favor of other watches. One, they don't have a great catalog system of the models. Now, rumor has it, and coming from credible sources, that Frank Mueller actually just kind of pieces together these limited production runs in their assembly lines. Now, it's kind of unfortunate to talk about it in this manner because we want to believe that watches are all luxury goods and experiences and everyone is taking the most care in terms of products. But the rumor has it is that there's just not a great catalog system from the brand and they're just putting in pieces that they have lying around. Now, this is a bit of insider you know, um, watch dealer information. So take this with a grain of salt. But I'll say that when you compare a brand like Frank Mueller to something like a Vacheron or a Rolex or even something like an Omega, you know, there's much more consistency in terms of models and also reference numbers than with Frank Mueller. I know when I was working on a project and we were cataloging, 
different reference numbers from brands and models, Frank Mueller was all over the place. They'd use the same reference number for different dials, different cases, uh, almost different shapes sometimes. And it just, there's just no making sense of their nomenclature. And when you're developing a brand, how can you really have that? There's just not consistency in their product lineup. Now, once again, not saying anything negatively about the quality of the components that are being used, but in terms of a business I think that it really did fall apart. And once the celebrities stopped wearing them, they didn't really have anything to keep the watch collector community and to keep buying the watches. So Frank Mueller, once again, very hot period of time where everyone wanted to have one, but now it's very much the opposite. Next, we have the IWC Pilot Watch. Now, the IWC, predominantly the big pilot, once again, had such a hot period time where everyone wanted this watch. In fact, before John Mayer got into collecting Rolex, you can see he did videos with, you know, Talking Watches, Hodinkee, and Ben Clymer, where he talks about how the IWC Pilot Watches got him into collecting watches. And so, once again much like all the other watches that have fallen by the wayside from being very popular, now not, the IWC Pilot line has really declined because of celebrities not wearing it. it. These watches, because they were larger or larger for the time, they were also very popular among basketball players. Now, it's you'll be hard-pressed to find a basketball player who's not wearing an Audemars Piguet or Patek Philippe or maybe even a Rolex if they haven't quite caught on the, bang, the bandwagon with the rest of them. They were wearing IWC Pilot watches for a while. And of course, celebrities and movie stars again. Now, the IWC lineup has many watches in it, but what they've done to their, their Pilot line hasn't quite been as drastic in terms of reducing the quality as some of their more approachable lines. But even when we talk about some of the smaller Pilot lines coming out of IWC, you know, they're using some some unfortunately base movements and the retail prices are also kind of climbing up. And so when you have movements like micro brands and there'll, there'll be kind of a micro brand I'll talk about in a second, but when you see micro brands really pushing the envelope, increasing the quality, absolutely to the top for the price point and you have a brand like IWC that's lowering the quality, raising the price and kind of just going by the mentality that a rising tide lifts all boats. That's why we see the, the popularity going down because those people that would have been buying the IWC now um, or previously based on the specs are now buying other watches based on the specs. So once again, a really great family of watches, but it has fallen by the wayside for those reasons. Next, we have RGM watches. Now, if you're not familiar, RGM is a brand and company that was founded by a guy named Roland Murphy. Now, he's based in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So, basically the middle of nowhere in terms of watchmaking. But he set up a workshop, and at first he was kind of taking stock movements, putting them into cases that were being milled there, and taking pieces of from other parts of the world and putting together watches, but it kind of progressed and now, you know, they have some of their own movements and the quality has gone up throughout the years. Now, it's interesting to mention that Roland Murphy and RGM watches were really, I want to say, the only either manufacturer or assembler of luxury watches in the United States for maybe close to eight, nine years before others started jumping on that trend. He was really one of the only in the industry at a time where there were so many publications that wanted to talk about interesting things happening in the watch industry, all the magazines, all the blogs. He was able to receive so much free press and it was because he was the only one. Now, once again, much like some of the other brands that I talk about and some of the trends that I mentioned, because of micro brands and because there are businesses really pushing the envelope in terms of quality, he's kind of had to really double down on his American spirit and heritage kind of, you know, um, feeling that you get in his brand. And so when we look at Roland Murphy's watches, the demand has died down because there are so many other alternatives. Now, he does have a couple of staple products that keep you know, coming up from time to time in his offerings, notably a deck watch as well as a dive watch. But there are many of these things out there from other brands and manufacturers. And now that he's not the only gun in town, there are other places that collectors are just willing to spend their money and get what they believe to be more value. Now, if you're very into being a diehard, you know, American or American heritage or partially American watch company, he was 
the only guy in town for a while, but then shortly thereafter came a company called Kobold. Now, if you're a watch collector, you might be familiar with the Kobold Sorway Diver, which I think currently is probably a watch that you see getting traded a whole ton on the watch forums, Watch You Seek, and the Rolex forum. This seems to be the watch that people that still really do enjoy the Kobold brand seem to gravitate towards. We've had this watch in the past at DelrayWatch.com, and I can say that the Kobold watches do have really nicely finished cases in terms of being a rugged, durable watch. They're strong, they're tough, you know, they're using stock movements, so they're going to be workhorse, they're going to perform, they're very thick cases. And the brand was worn by James Gandolfini. As you know, that um, was the lead actor or um, personality behind The Sopranos. So I don't have to talk about that. You all know about The Sopranos. But the interesting thing to note about Kobold is that there have been kind of a web of not only conspiracies, but also a lot of evidence to support that there were just a lot of negative things happening with the brands in terms of potentially some scams or some backlogs. I don't know the total truth behind that, but nonetheless, there is a lot in the public eye and on the forums. You know, apparently a couple of uh, amateur journalists spent a lot of time investigating the Kobold brand and following some paper trails and going overseas. And there's a lot of negative energy around the brand and about a year ago, I think this was all really surfacing and it caused the brand to absolutely tank. And I don't know where they are today. When you go to the website, you see that they do offer expeditions and little trinkets and some other interesting things on there. So they have branched out further away from watches. Now, once again, disclaimer, I don't know the entire truth behind these um, you know, different things that are being said about the brand. So do your own homework and research on that. But nonetheless, the watches are pretty decent, if not great. They were, once again, one of the only guns in town. Now there are so many micro brands and you see them kind of delving into other categories. And of course, the watches have lost, in my opinion, most of the demand, if not all of it. So what do you guys think? Are there any watches or brands on this list that you think really do deserve to come back and increase the demand because you personally believe in them? Also, please do not forget the thumbs up, like, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. And leave in the comments below any questions, comments, or things you'd like to see in the future. Let's all be well. You have been chatting with John P. Ciao.